Hello and welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. The second round of the competition continues to churn out some remarkable results as teams readjust their squads and fine-tune preparations to jostle for key positions in the Premier League table. This week, we are in the Garden Parish of St. Anne for our Sunday televised doubleheader, which kicked off with the high-riding Portmore United facing home side Lime Hall Academy. Check out the highlights. Jamaica Premier League action on the North Coast. We're here at the Jacks Hall Sports Complex, Lime Hall, against Portmore United. And what a fixture this promises to be. Lime Hall all to play for, still looking to register their first win. And Portmore United, seven match weeks unbeaten, five wins in seven games. And this is how they will shape up. Few changes as well. Jaheim Williams between the stick. Tamani Sewell, the captain. Former Jamaica cricketer as well. Carlos Campbell, Darius Stewart, probably the most talented of the midfielders. He wears a number 17. Devante Redmond, Jimoy Jones, Damani Miller, Kuri Mendes, Marlon Pennycook. Some business in the transfer window. He comes in, spent some time at the Chapleton Maroons last season in their number eight. Ronaldo Brown, who has one goal in the season, and their player to watch in Rohan Sewell. Portmore, they are all smiles and they'll be playing with a 3-5-2 formation. Benjamin Williams, their regular custodian between the sticks. Okila Howard, Stephen Young, who scored in that Mount Pleasant draw. One all, Akeem Mullins, Jaheen Rose and Nicoy Gale. So they'll be playing with two number sixes, two central defensive midfielders. Interesting. Richard Livingston, the youngster, plays out wide. The stats captain, Emilia Rousseau, who now plays in his new role of centre-back. Their player to watch, Siobhan Walsh, Martin Davis and teenager Omar Reed. The full match highlights. T4 official Odette Hamilton, the lady with the whistle, Portmore United driving forward with a bit of the play initially, which it was expected in their full blue. An opportunity on the edge of the 18 that fell to Howard. And not the best of strikes. Then this ball into the area, probably the, arguably the best chance that was Walsh in the first half. And that header just hitting the outside. And yeah, Ronaldo Brown got into the area of Portmore. There was loose defending from the Portmore team and he should have done better, should have hit the target. Then this strike from Darius Stewart, which was easily held by Benjamin Williams. Siobhan Walsh was busy throughout the 90 minutes. That one, he struck just wide. And then the Rousseau delivery was struck here onto the crossbar from Martin Davis. His best moment in the game, it was a volley. Had Jaheim Williams beaten, but not the crossbar. And then this attempt again. This one fought, fell to Mendes. And Benjamin Williams with a big save, which forced him off the field with injury. Then Portmore came in, and that was the last chance of the first half, which should have been converted from Omar Reed. It wasn't, and he was taken off at half time. Rudolph Austin came in, and what a difference he made. Look at this, almost sneaking into the corner. And that was a brilliant save from Jaheim Williams. Just before that, he had an acrobatic attempt in Rudolf Austin. And then this pass, brilliant, into Siobhan Walsh, who still had quite a bit to do. Jaheim Williams will be disappointed he didn't save it. But he was probably beaten for pace underneath him and into the back of the net. Eight on the season for Siobhan Walsh. Leading goal scorer for Portmore and second on the goal scoring list. Portmore were finally away. And that came in the 89th minute for the big number nine. Lime Hall just couldn't recover, and Portmore would add to their tally. The two youngsters, Shaquel Henry into Headley of the Geo variety, and Henry picking up the return pass. Look at this, this was a lovely move. Lime Hall caught all out of sorts, and Shaquel Henry with his third of the season, 2-0 to Portmore. They eventually got the job done. Rudolph, how does it feel at this stage of your career to still be able to come on in a Premier League game here and make the kind of impact you made today? Well, I'm overwhelmed, you know, it's, it's brilliant, you know, and it's three points for my team, you know, any way I can help my team, you know, I'm glad to help them. Uh, well, while you were on the, the bench, what was the thought going through your mind as you saw your team really not firing in that first half? Well, I, I, I was thinking, you know, we, we weren't doing so well in the final third, you know, our decision making was poor. So, you know, we changed around a few things in the, in the second half and, you know, it paid off. What does that say, though, about the youngsters um, requiring more time, you feel? 
Yes, um, I just think we were rushing the game too much. You know, I think we should have been a bit more patient and just let the ball do the work instead of rushing it. You know, we rushed too many of our final passes and they weren't good. Well, I can't let you go without asking you how does it feel? You would have been there before, but for the youngsters being top of the table even for a few hours. Yes, um, before the game, we told the players that um, these are the kind of games um, that is um, very hard to play. Because when you're playing teams like Mount Pleasant, you don't need no motivation. Just the name alone motivates you. So when you're playing Limehall, no disrespect to Limehall, who is down in the table, you need to motivate yourself. And you can see we turn up here a bit flat today, and we nearly pay the price for it. All right, Rudolph, great game. All the best. Thank you, man. Yeah, so there you have it. Rudolph Austin just came on for one half, but was so impactful and played that decisive pass to open the, the scoring here. Um, Persa, for long stretches of it, in fact, in way up into the 90th minute or so, you were in the game. Um, what went wrong? Well, I just thought in the game, um, my feeling is that we played a good 70 minutes a game. Yeah? But after the game has the game gone, the, the guys ran out of gas. The substitutes, the though, gas. when they ran out of gas, you brought on some person who should have been well gassed up. They didn't seem to give you that. No. I could hear you shouting at Edwards, not giving you the recoveries and stuff. No, no. What I wanted from him was to bring the energy to the game, to lift the guys that are already losing out in, in uh, strength. Eh? And he didn't bring that, you know? But we have to just keep fighting. We have to keep fighting and never give up. Coach Persa there, who, again, disappointed. He's not the first coach at uh, Lima to be disappointed. You almost left here disappointed. Potential banana skin. There was a lot of skating out there. Um, almost didn't happen for you. Yeah, definitely. It was a rough one. I mean, um, we weren't connecting up, up front offensively. And um, that's, that's what caused the game to, to go as long and close as, as, as it, uh, it, it's been today. I did ask you about potential signings coming in as X Factor, new boys coming in. It was the old boy, Austin, who really injected the pace, the calmness, and the decisive pass in the end. Definitely. Um, this is a game that we, 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 we put down as a winnable game. When nothing was going, going in midfield, um, we took a gamble and we pushed him up in midfield. Overwork him somewhat as he, at his age, but I mean, he, he brings some life and it was also connecting with the, with the forwards and going forward with them. So definitely it, it made, he made a change today. He did make a change, but let me ask you about that attempt from him at his age, that scissors kick. I mean, it almost lodged in. I could see you just gasping like, yeah, that one would have been spectacular. Uh, I was disappointed. He normally scored those in training. <laughs> so, I mean, um, I was disappointed. He, he, he does that a lot in training. Um, at his age, he, he's very fit. And um, he, has, he has probably a couple more years to go with, 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 in, with him. I mean, um, he's, he's one of the leaders. And definitely you saw it when he went on the field. Um, the game was a little bit more settled and we made some better decisions, which was lacking in the first half. Well, top of the table you are, coach. Enjoy it if only for a few hours. All the only best. Only for a few hours. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so Portmore pick up their ninth win, while Limehall Academy are still to win a game in the league after 15 tries. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Join us for more after the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. Host Mount Pleasant was up against the other promoted team, Treasure Beach, in the second match of the doubleheader. Let's pick up the full match highlights. Experienced officiating team led by O'Shea Nation, the man with the whistle. And Mount Pleasant started the game the best way they could, by scoring. Their 22nd goal of the season and Sule McCullough had his third. Daniel Green picking up the assist. And McCullough with a smart flick with the right boot. The captain, pass home, pass Holmes, who could do nothing about it. Mount Pleasant with a beautiful start and setting the pace early. Had other opportunities, Shaquille Bradford had quite a few of them. Half chances as he always does, Bradford. 
but was unable to add to his eight goals. That was a strike with the left foot wide of the target. Then Green putting that one in, and a Ken Bradford, as you could see, half chance, heading over the top, always willing to try. Then Treasure Beach, they were reduced to 10 men. A silly foul from Romario Bryan in the second half, and he saw yellow for the second time. A smile on his face, but yeah, a bit irresponsible from him. Treasure Beach had to do it with 10, and that they did in terms of staying in the game. Daniel Green did hit the crossbar from a glancing header. And that's the closest they came. Then this was a moment for Treasure Beach to draw level and just couldn't take it. Comfortably wide in the end from Carlton Salmon. And Daniel Russell, a lot to say, quite annoyed with his defence line. Luckily for him, Salmon was inaccurate. And Treasure Beach, the chance was gone. Of course, a chunk came on as a substitute. So to a tough boy by Grave. And they combined on a couple of occasions but couldn't find the net. As Treasure Beach continued to be stubborn, Fitzroy Cummins, the man of the match with the head over the top. He was solid right throughout the game, was Cummins. And then Chung again, combining Gosri. And blocked again, Treasure Beach standing firm, but yet unable to create any real opportunities of their going in. Aubrey had this strike, which was on target and safe from Holmes. And that was all she wrote for match week 15 for these two teams. Mount Pleasant 1, Treasure Beach 0. Three on target from 10 attempts for Mount Pleasant. They weren't at their best in terms of finishing, but they got the job done. Nothing on target recorded for Treasure Beach over 90 minutes. That was disappointing for Mar Wedderburn and company. There were some 27 fouls between the two and six yellow cards shown from Shane Nation. Treasure Beach, the more indisciplined of the two, and losing a player as well. Two saves were made by Carlisle Holmes between the sticks, but he couldn't stop the important goal for Mount Pleasant, who had majority of the possession at 60%. And the lone goal in this contest. Three big points for Mount Pleasant. They win this one by a goal to nil. Dwight Jeremiah's with our man of the match, none other than Fitzroy Simpson. Yes, Cummins, um, you had a decent game today. Um, the rest of your team up front though, what do you make of their performance? I mean, we go back to the training ground again, you know, we take it from there, you know, we just have to kind of up by the top and put our chances away. It seems like it's, you don't get flustered. I see other defenders around you and they have arguments with the players above that are in front of them not doing what they're supposed to do, maybe tracking back or finishing off a chance. You just go about your business. Is, is, is that a nature of how you play normally, just not bothered, you just deal with what you have to do? I mean, not necessarily, but again, we have to go again. I mean, they put the work up there, I have to just stay behind and defend for them as well. So at the end of the day, I mean, they have to go and they have to come back and defend as well. It, it, it would appear that it, it wasn't Treasure Beach that made the game difficult for Mount Pleasant today. It was more Mount Pleasant making it difficult for themselves. I mean, again, we just go back to the training ground and take it from there and go back to the drawing board. And well, good performance from you today. Thank you so much. And I hope it continues. Thank right. you. Yeah, Thank good you. work. So, Mount Pleasant walking away with all three points. Uh, Cummins with the man of the match performance. Really good performance from him, both in attack and defence. He, he went about his business, even though things weren't clicking today. Um, you knew it was always going to be difficult coming to Mount Pleasant to play. Um, not having a lot of the ball, that was fine. But what was more disappointing for you? The goal, you know, the way all the goals score, honestly. And... Um the chance that we got, you know, it was so close, but yet so far, you know. As I say in the in the, the post interview, you know, we, we shop and we have numbers, so we actually can can stand up and we um, stand up to any pressure in our sense. But that first goal there, I tell you, you know, so it's the first goal that get we done and then um, our chance that we miss. But however, still we are here and as I say, we don't get that gel. We have to try to force everything right now to go forward because our back is against the wall. No time to really even smile right now. So we always have to just try to dig it, dig it, dig it each game we go. Yeah, it could get more difficult for you tomorrow when Malines play if they, if they extend the lead out, out, above the drop zone. But you talk about us would figure out the changes you've made. It's, it's almost as if the team didn't figure it out today for you. Well, as I said, changes in our talking about players that come in. You understand? Because as you can see, it's a much bigger group. 
and uh, I sure you see some some not familiar faces today, you know. So we are just here. We are we are working hard at, at training to really get it right, you know. But we just need a goal. And remember, anytime we score first, we're not gonna lose. Uh, that is the biggest thing when I get off our back right as now. You, as you talk about that, that has been key for you not being able to go ahead with a lead. Any of your acquisition or your hiring someone to come in to really get you the goals? Well, we are, we, are, we are in the process right now, to be honest. It's not finished as yet, but we are in that process. You don't want to give a name? Not, no. Okay. Well, Coach, let's hope you get what you want and be able to fight even more. All the best. All right, Jerry. Big All up right. every time. Yeah, Coach Whitmore, um, you got the win. But it seemed as if Mount Pleasant was the biggest opponent for themselves today. Well, yes, um, I think after we went up early in the game, I think um, complacency, we didn't have the, the killer instinct, especially in the, the final third. I think we, we could exercise a bit more patience in, 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 in going forward. But um, nonetheless, it's three points. The change in bringing off uh, Phillips and, and Bailey, was it that they were the main culprits not giving you what you wanted? No, not, not necessarily, you know, but uh, we, we need players to play. You know, and uh, you see the substitution, they, it brought fruit in, in just not getting the goal. But um, I think, especially when the, the opponent went down to 10 man, we, we didn't utilize the wide areas of the pitch. But as I say, such is the nature of the game. In terms of your team and after today, uh, what is it the main thing you need to look to work at? I see young Avery coming on, a, a player that likes to carry the ball just at his final passes or his decision in the final third and not quite at it yet. Well, again, um, we have a lot of work to do in the final third of the pitch, you know, um, especially we're, we're creating chances, but we're not putting in our way. So that is the main area. Well, let's hope you, you get it together and be able to put it away, coach. Okay, then. All, All right. right. Then. So Mount Pleasant continued their impressive run in the campaign whilst reducing Treasure Beach to their 12th loss. We take another break here on JPL in 30. More football action right after this. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The lone Monday night fixture saw action out west as host Montego Bay United welcomed season campaigners Waterhouse to the Mobe Sports Complex. Here are the highlights. The Montego Bay Sports Complex is ready for action in this fixture. Match week 15, Montego Bay United coming up against Waterhouse. Six Premier League titles between these two teams. Mobe with four of them. So Mobe United in their red kit with grey trim. This is how they will be lining up. And they'll be playing with a 4-4-2. A lot of work in the transfer market. Hospital is coming in. Trinningham as well. Both Trinidad and Tobago Nationals. A Wayne Gordon, who was the, well, the Golden Boot winner back in 2016, the last time they won with 19 goals. His full partner, Brian Brown, who is also a former Golden Boot winner as well. So an interesting lineup. They have the Brazilians in there as well. Korea and Ferreira as well as their goalkeeper, William Ferreira, between the sticks. Waterhouse go back with their 4-3-3 formation. Not much changes in the squad here, even though they're looking to do business in the transfer market. Nikoi Christian has to settle for a place on the bench. Andre Fletcher is there as well, of course, with six goals and in good form, as well as Javain Bryan, their player to watch. The point man as well with nine goals this season. Rivaldo Mitchell comes into the starting lineup. Always an exciting player in the wide areas. Uh, Kemai Foster, as usual, between the sticks and the ever present Shamari Dallas with his work rate in the flank area. We expect him to be busy as well, this Waterhouse team, as we said, executing already a 3-0 win against Mobe United this season. So the full match highlights, Alexi Perry, the man in charge of this fixture, was promising to be an exciting one, and it started that way. Andre Fletcher with a delivery towards the near post, but Simpson just couldn't get it on target. That one was on target from Trimingham early. 
and he took a deflection and Foster was acrobatic in his save to deny Mobe United a goal. Then Mobe, the two senior forwards putting something together. Brian to Gordon. Gordon with the strike, it was on target, but Foster did really well to deny him there. Coming off the body of Foster and going off the crossbar. And then this moment of dismay for Mobe United. No defending there at the back post. And Javain Bryan, he needed no more of an invitation. The leader was from Blair. And the finish to the far post was sensible from Waterhouse's at number nine. His 10th of the season. And it took just 33 minutes for Waterhouse to be away. Oh, yes, Kemar. Their long-serving fan enjoyed that as well. Waterhouse continued to drive forward. Booth towards the back post. And this should have been 2-0. Andre Fletcher in the form he's in. That should have been his seventh of the season, but put it wide. And it would come back eventually to haunt Waterhouse. Then this. This was the first sign of a defensive mistake. This was from Elvis Wilson. And it nearly played in Brian Brown, who was looking to toe past Foster, who did well. Then this, the second goal from the corner, Denardo Thomas into Rivaldo Mitchell, who got himself in front of William Pereira and opened his account on the season. 2-0 to Waterhouse after 59 minutes. At that point, they thought they had three points, but Mobe, they had other ideas. This finish first from Lucas Correa, his third of the season, saved initially from Kemar Foster. We had a reasonably good game, Foster but put it back into the business area and Korea was there to finish with the right boot into the roof and Foster could do nothing. That was 2-1 and that one came after the 75th minute and you could see Mobe United growing in confidence and believing their fans behind them, the 12th man. And then this moment for Owain Gordon in front of his fans as he's done so many times before, 48 in his Premier League career, second of the season for the 32-year-old and Mobe United were all square at two and now looking for that winner. Foster could afford a smile because he knew he could do nothing about it, beaten for the second time on the evening. And Wayne Gordon just preaching to his fans. Unfortunately for Mobe, they weren't able to come up with the winner. All square after 90 minutes. The lights are bright in Bright, are shining bright on the finish from Mobe United. Six shots on target from eight attempts. Five on target for Waterhouse. They had 14 attempts. They should have been better with their finishing at times. And they would have put this game to bed early. 26 fouls and three yellow cards shown by referee Alexi Perry. Leonardo Jimson, Shamar Booth. The guilty parties for Mobe, for Waterhouse. And of course, Darnell Hospitalis for Mobe United. They had four saves in Waterhouse. And Montbebe United with the majority of the possession at 55%. At the Mobe's, Montego Bay Sports Complex, it's all square after 90 minutes. Mobe United 2, Waterhouse 2. Our man of the match is with Dwight Jeremiah. I mean, it's one of those nights. I mean, with all your experience, you probably would have seen it all. But just tell me what was going through your mind coming out in the second half and having it all to do. And when the second goal went in, what were you thinking? You know, in the locker room, we already talk about it. You know, we're 2-0 down and we talk about what we can do to change the game. We talk about how much we can come out and, you know, just leave everything on the pitch, play it like a final. It's the last game of the season. Just give it to all. That was the word in the locker room. We come out and we execute. 32 years old, but still has it and rescued a point for this man's team. It must feel like a win for you, the Santos. I mean, not, not really, not really. Win is a win. I think we should have won the match in the last 20 minutes, but we didn't do that. And uh, it's fair because they play better the first half, we play better the second half. We cannot complain about yeah, that. Yeah, could you say a fair result because I was going there. But in the first half, defensively, it just seemed to be at sea. There was two easy uh, goals given up. Was it the, was the midfield. Actually, our, our, our midfield was very open. I mean, and we tried to fix that at second half, at the half time. Mm -hmm. So we improved second half and we could manage to put a lot of pressure on them, even down two goals. And this is merit of the players, you know. Our players never give up. So they, they go for it, doesn't matter the result, the partial result. And Montego Bay 
fans getting a Monday night fixture and certainly did not disappoint in the end. Uh, but this man must be disappointed being 2 0 up and to walk away with just a point, throwing away two points, that is, it must seem for you. Yeah, when you look at it, I mean, you know, but nevertheless, I thought we played well. I thought we were in full control of the game. Uh, we, we lost our concentration and we, we gave up two soft goals. You know what I mean? Well, and, you know, that was our accolade um, all season. We, we've been giving up goals and we've been you know, giving up silly goals. And tonight, you know, we, we, we pay for it tonight. I think one area you might want to look at as well is the amount of free kicks you gave up in some dangerous area. There was some warning signs in the first half when Ferreira launched a ball in there and Trimingham got on to the end of it. It was a Ferreira free kick that unlocked and opened the first goal for Montego Bay. Yeah, I mean, that was um, the initial, um, that's the first object we saw in in, in change room, and we talk about that, you know. I mean, don't go through the players back. You stay on your foot. Um, the surface is wet. As I say, you know, we, we make some schoolboy errors today. Yeah, Waterhouse giving up a two-goal advantage and coming away with a point. Well, that somewhat completes match week 15, as you can see the asterisk beside Arnett Gans, because that's in the 90th minute and they lead by four goals to one. So I think that will be three points for the junglist. But yeah, a big win for Portmore United that took them top of the table for at least an hour and a half before Mount Pleasant completed their 1 0 victory over Treasure Beach. They are at the top. Draws for Harborview and Veer United and Humberland and Dumble Holden in terms of nil all score lines, as well as Tivoli Gans and Cavalier who missed opportunities to move high up the table. And this is how that table looks. So Cavalier will remain in third position after that. Arnett Gardens with that, well, seconds away from a win will take them to 30 points nine wins from 15 they are up to fourth position and as you can see treasure beach and lime hall in the relegation battle there treasure beach still four points away from safety more lines with that loss remain on 11 points so that's better for the relegation teams in treasure beach and lime hall in terms of well opportunity of coming out of of that era mobile united they remain in eighth well, move up actually by one place to eight with 19 points and Waterhouse, they remain in seventh on 20, just outside of the playoff spots as they missed that opportunity to leapfrog Dumble Holden in the top six. That's how we put a lid on another JPL in 30 on your home of champions on Sportsmax. Tune in next week for more exciting football action.